Well, welcome to the superpowers in uh, sensing part of the day. And we've got some really, really interesting companies that are leveraging some of the pretty transformative changes in sensors and applying that into the, the health space. Now, what was interesting about each of these companies is I, I had to swat up a little bit. I had to do a little bit of reading about the stuff they're doing. And as a, as a physician, I'm a psychiatrist, I'm trained as a family physician, but I'm reading about their technologies. I'm like, hey, you know what? There's actually a lot of my patients that would benefit from each of their technologies. But then I stopped and I thought, you know what? I would benefit from a lot of their technologies because what each of them are doing, each of these companies, one of the things that we're gonna talk about is that they're not only building technologies for wellness, but also for illness. And I think that's, that's very powerful. So I'm gonna uh, take a seat and we're gonna get to know a little bit about them. Um, we'll, let's, let's start off and uh, just introduce yourselves, just a few sentences and we can find out a little bit more about the technology uh, following that. Okay, let's start. Well, I'm Frank McGillan. I'm uh, heading up the wearables, consumer wearable business for Neurometrics. Um, you know, my background is in building consumer health businesses with companies like J&J as well as uh, Philips, and uh, we'll talk about this product later. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that in a little bit. Thank you so much, Frank. Great. Uh, I'm Laurel Christensen. I'm the Chief Audiology Officer for GN Resound Group. We are a Danish uh, hearing aid manufacturer. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jake Leach. I'm the uh, Senior Vice President of Research and Development at Dexcom, a company that makes uh, continuous glucose monitors. Uh, my background is medical device product development. I've been working in the diabetes space for about 20 years. Hi, I'm Charles Maglian. I'm the founder and CEO of Bethometer. Uh, essentially, we're a breath analysis platform uh, geared towards a consumer-facing industry. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur and uh, glad to be here. Awesome, fantastic. So maybe we'll start by talking a little bit about neuro neurometrics. So tell me a little bit about some yeah. of the stuff that you're doing. Well, we have a new, new type of wearable. It's called Quell. Um, Quell, it goes beyond simple tracking. We actually deliver therapy, and we're targeting 100 million Americans are suffering from chronic pain. Uh, that's more than diabetes, more than hypertension, more than um, heart disease and cancer combined. Um, and we do it through a really neat platform. It's 100% drug-free. Um, and it uses neurostimulation basically to tap into the body's natural pain relief. Similar in terms of the, the technical concept is an implantable spinal stimulator, but we're doing it in an over-the-counter form in a way that's very discreet and really uh, makes it easy to achieve great uh, pain relief. Okay. And, and you're not, so you're not only working on the, the pain aspect, but you're also allowing people to monitor sleep. These are two huge areas for a lot of people, a lot of people either yeah. with illness or healthy people. That yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at sort of the linkage with sleep and health, I mean, it's pretty, pretty, pretty tight, particularly folks who suffer from chronic pain. Because the sad thing is if you have chronic pain, you don't sleep well. And if you're not sleeping well, your chronic pain actually gets, it gets worse. So we're FDA cleared for use while sleeping, which is pretty unique. But then we've got one of the most advanced sleep uh, monitoring systems in a wearable. And, and the reason we're able to track sleep so accurately is because it's a leg-worn device, mm -hmm. as opposed to wrist-worn. Um, and you know, the wrist, there's a lot of, I guess, noise or, or uh, potential false readings based on your arm movement, where the legs are relatively stable, and you can get really precise measures, not only of how well you sleep, but what's your sleep position? Are you kicking during the night? Are you getting up? And we're able to leverage that to help um, the person actually improve their, their sleeping conditions so that that link between sleep and pain, both of them improve. Awesome. And, 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 and uh, what we're seeing on the screen, what you can see in front of you, that's that, that's, this is the app, right? This is an app component? Yeah, that's, um, that, that's a, a, a screenshot, one of the screens within our, within our app. It's Bluetooth Smart. We actually got FDA clearance on Tuesday of this week for our next generation a product. Our original version of Quell, the app was more, you know, treated like any typical wearable device that was seen as a low risk device. We, we fully integrated the app into the actual uh, medical device, so it's a complete system right now, which allowed us to, to do a lot more user control and user interaction, mm -hmm. which is one thing we heard a lot from our current users, they were looking for more control. I, I got it, wonderful. Um, now I'm going to just have to flip to Dexcom, because that's, I think, my next slide. Um, let's see. Well, there we go. Take it away. Sure. Tell so, me a little bit about um, Dexcom. Dexcom's in the business of continuous glucose monitoring. It's a special type of glucose monitor that measures uh, continuously. It's a body-worn sensor. Uh, it's a patch 
that has a, incorporated in it is a small glucose probe that goes just under the skin. That is what's constantly measuring the glucose. And then every five minutes, that patch communicates data directly to a smartphone via Bluetooth. What you see here is our fifth generation product, which is uh, the product we just launched at the end of last year. And the key component that's new with this product is the communication is directly from the body-worn patch to the smartphone. You don't have to carry that extra receiver display that you have in our previous generations. Uh, one of the key aspects of the product is a remote monitoring feature. So if you think about uh, a child with diabetes and their parents, um, their parents are critically interested in that glucose and they always want to make sure their child is safe. So what this product does is as the, the uh, child wears the product, that data is being uploaded to our cloud system and then shared to their parents. So each parent has their own app. They can follow their child's glucose. So it adds this extra sense of freedom the patients, children haven't had in the past. Uh, there, we have uh, countless cases of uh, patients who, they didn't even let their kids spend the night at somebody's house because they're worried about managing the child's glucose overnight. With this product, uh, you don't have that problem because the parents can see the glucose from uh, their home. And, 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 and you, I really um, appreciate that kind of patient's perspective because all the technologies you're building come with those patient experience and patient narratives. And just the experience of a child being able to socialize with their peers and not fearing something's going to happen to them or their parents fearing something's going to happen is very, uh, very powerful. So I appreciate the work that you're, the work that you're doing. So uh, we're going to go to Charles. And would you like to tell, me, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Breathometer? Sure. Uh, so I started the company about two and a half years ago. Um, and essentially, so we started out uh, in the alcohol space. Um, and everyone is pretty familiar with an alcohol breathalyzer, whether it's a consumer device or a B2B uh, police grade device. Um, but quickly thereafter, in about six months, um, I partnered up with my alumni, Stanford University uh, Medical, and as well as Cleveland Clinic. And I quickly realized that there was a more massive opportunity that lied in front of breath analysis. Everyone is pretty familiar with uh, the various biomarker detection methods, right? Like blood, urine, uh, there's also saliva. But in terms of breath, it potentially could pave the way, uh, essentially, for non-invasive, cost-effective biomarker detection. Um, and so everyone's familiar with alcohol, but if you open it up, a lot of people don't know, but there's roughly about 300 biomarkers, uh, essentially, that are available, of which close to about 20 plus percent are actually applicable. So we obviously established the brand uh, in the alcohol space, which helped us generate revenue. Now we're actually just launching what you see before you uh, with probably, arguably, the number one consumer medical device uh, brand and company in the world. So we announced it here at CES, uh, our partnership with Philips, and specifically in their oral health care division, their Sonicare product line. So what you see here is basically their Sonicare toothbrush. They just launched their uh, ultrasonic technology uh, tongue scraper and their zinc-based breath X spray, which actually kills bacteria as opposed to Listerine, which is alcohol-based and dries out your mouth and doesn't really have high efficacy. What you see beside it is Mint. Mint is our essentially first generation uh, oral healthcare monitor. And what it does is it can pick up the family of volatile sulfuric compounds. What that correlates to is bacteria emitted through your, uh, through your breath. And so the higher amounts of bacteria that you have, you emit sulfuric compounds like methamarcaptin, hydrogen sulfide, et cetera, et cetera. So we can quantify that and basically uh, give you visibility and transparency in terms of is your baseline of bacteria low, moderate, or high? And should you increase the frequency of brushing your teeth, flossing, uh, your gut obviously in between your teeth, or tongue scraping, which basically close to about 60 to 70% of your bacteria resides in terms of bacterial biofilms. So point is, a lot of people don't know this, but in terms of Americans, we have over 50% of Americans that are 35 and above have either a moderate or high uh, form of gum disease. And so what Mint really is, is it's a dentist in your pocket. Um, and essentially, we can go ahead and communicate, drive true behavior modification um, for someone that really wants to maintain and improve their oral health care regimen. But in short, this is a full closed loop back, uh, a loop feedback system. Um, and who better to you know, partner with uh, but than Philips. And then just in short, in closing, uh, we are now uh, developing a roadmap that speaks to uh, essentially weight loss through ketone detection real time. Um, and then longer term are things like asthma, spirometry and nitric oxide, so predicting asthmatic attacks. And the holy grail is diabetes, blood glucose, but it's a multi-array biomarker application and lung cancer. So. Wow. 
Fantastic. That's, uh, that's us. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yep. Um, and Laurel, mm -hmm. um, Resound Smart Hearing. Right? I was fascinated to uh, learn a little bit about what you guys are doing. Can you tell, tell, tell us a little bit? Yeah, so Resound is, is really working on the future of hearing aids. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it's a really bright future. You have uh, hearing aids that you know, usually were just you know, put two hearing aids on someone and send them out the door. Um, what's different about the hearing aids today is the amount of sensing we can do in the environment. Every time a hearing impaired person walks into a different environment, they have a different set of challenges that need to be taken care of. And so these hearing aids can sense the environment, make changes to directional microphones, to noise reduction, to the feedback control. So you know, they, they're using all this information in order to make people hear or help them be successful in different environments. Um, What's really kind of on the cutting edge today is connectivity. Using low power Bluetooth, mm -hmm. we can wirelessly connect to, um, in this case, you see an app, you see a remote control app. Um, it really reduces the stigma of wearing hearing aids because you can put your hearing aids on, you never have to touch them. And you can get out your cell phone where everyone has their cell phone out today. You can make all of your hearing aid changes on your cell phone. And there's a level of personalization that's really never been seen before in hearing aids today. You can actually go into uh, a noise program with directional microphones. You can change how the beam of the microphone is. And if it's a very narrow beam, uh, zeroing in just on one person, or if you can open it up and hear the person to your right and to your left. Uh, you can change the amount of noise reduction. You can even with this, uh, uh, make your hearing aid settings just right for the environment that you're in, and then you can geotag them. And the hearing aid will sense that you've come back to that environment, and oh, wow. it will change right. the hearing aid back uh, to those settings. So different. So so this is uh, something that's like the context, right? So this is using geomapping. It's becoming contextually aware of what you're doing. Is that, is that room room by room? Uh, yeah, office location. By office? It's just using and, location and awesome. it's saying, okay, you know, they tagged this location, and these are the changes that were made to the hearing aid so that they could hear in this location, mm -hmm. and they're automatically applied the next time. And, and we even have you know, an, an Apple Watch app where you know, it's a really great way to turn your hearing aid up and down and personalize for any environment. Uh, you can change the bass and treble settings. And you know, at, the, at the end of the day, these are really helping the people. You know, in, in the United States, almost 30 million people um, are hearing impaired. And, and, and it's really a quality of life and overall health that's, that's impacted. There are studies today um, out of Johns Hopkins that, that are linking dementia with untreated hearing loss. And hearing loss is getting a lot of attention. And what we have to have with, within the hearing aid space is hearing aids that actually work. They work in all environments. They work in, and transparently people can go through their lives and, and are able to hear. Wow, wow, thank you, thank you. So one of the things that seems to, um, that all of you are kind of mentioning is that using apps, things like apps or integrating the technologies that you're creating into other devices or partnering with other organizations, this seems to be pretty, pretty important. I mean, how, how do you see this kind of progressing? Apps, is that just the kind of baseline, having an app? What's the next, what's the next step? What's happening there? Well, I think the, the convenience of having the data, uh, particularly uh, having your glucose on your phone, um, I can see, you know, everyone's looking at their phones out there. I'm sure you're checking your glucose out there. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's convenient. It's also discreet. Um, uh, also, the smartwatches, they kind of come along with the apps. Um, I'm wearing an Android, uh, experimental Android version. But it's just so discreet, you can check your glucose. Nobody knows what you're doing, whether you're checking email or your calendar. And we found that uh, patients really appreciate that. There are times when they don't want everybody in the room to have glucose, or that they have diabetes. And I guess we found that, you know, one of the biggest things that people with chronic pain are trying to do is they're really trying to do some of the basic things we take for granted. You know, going to work and being able to finish a full day of work, going to go and playing with your grandkids, going for a walk. Um, so it's not just about treating the pain, it's about kind of regaining control. Um, and it's really looking at the total person. And the app lets you not just think about the medication, or in our case, this is the electrical neurostimulation, but also the other factors that affect their life, and how do you put all the pieces together in order to feel well, to feel whole, and to you know, really do what you want to do? I think for, for us, it's a person being able to take control of their own hearing. I mean, that's what we want to do. Um, more and more, we take control of our own health care, and, and we think about these things. I think with, uh, with an app where you have more control, 
you know, use at your hearing. You don't have to go back to your hearing healthcare professional to have a change made to your hearing aid. You can make your changes. You know what, when you can hear. I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious when you can hear and when you can't hear. And so you can make those changes and make things better. I think that, you know, this is, it, this is just a budding uh, part of hearing healthcare. I think you're gonna see more and more and more personalization and just more benefit from, from these kind of systems. I mean, this system even has, um, you can turn, you can plug into TV, um, a TV streamer, and you can hand someone a microphone. So I could hand you a microphone and your voice would be streamed straight to my hearing aids. Wow. And, and the biggest problem that people have with hearing aids today is hearing and noise. Having a microphone on what you wanna hear overcomes that completely. Wow. Yeah, so I would, I would recap or, or echo uh, the sentiment that she just mentioned. So I think it's regaining control. I think it's shifting the paradigm. And it's not necessarily, I think, the app is the baseline. I think it's more of an enabler. So specifically, we're working on a product. It's called, Code's uh, name is, is Air. Um, it's our asthmatic product. It's a combination of spirometry and, and essentially nitric oxide. So spirometry, for the people that don't know, it uh, is correlated to volumetric capacity of the lungs, essentially velocity, and nitric oxide it, it correlates to inflammation of the lungs. But both combined, we can predict asthmatic attacks. The science has been proven, the case studies are validated, but if you can actually go ahead and convert, right, uh, miniaturize what would be a quarter million dollar spirometry machine that's typically in the Cleveland clinics of the world into a miniaturized handheld device where if your life is on the line, it passes the what I return back home test. And if I can tell you, hey, I could save your life, you're going to carry it. And in terms of what we can do with the, on the app side of things, it's not just the big data in the cloud, but it's basically connecting, creating that feedback loop with your doctor. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if, if I had asthma, you know, if, if I was actually having a high pheno curve, and it looks like in two days I could potentially have a minor attack or a moderate attack, should my doctor give me feedback in terms of adjusting my meds? So is it steroids, is it relaxers? Uh, should he change my prescription? My life is on the line. And so if we can go ahead and, and, and increase the quality of life and essentially minimize the potential risk of someone potentially having an attack and not dying, that's game changing. And so in the words of Dr. Ryan Dwight from Cleveland Clinic, who's a luminary in the pulmonology space, it just completely shifts the, the paradigm completely to the point where it's in the consumer's hands and they have full control. And based on our current healthcare system, what a better time but to do it now. Right, no, I've definitely seen that with, with um, all four companies that this is, uh, your, the technologies you're developing, these are technologies that are gonna take a degree, some of the care away from right. hospital settings, away from um, um, clinic settings and take it with the, with the patient, out and about with the patient as they wanna use it and enable them to actually lead um, lead better lives and more, more active lives, all of you. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, has there been any surprising ways that people are actually taking your technology, doing, using it in a way that's a little bit different to what you expected? Well, we, um, we uh, have a, uh, an organization that does a lot of clinical research um, and we provide product uh, to investigators and they purchase product from us. And one of the places we found our product going was actually into fitness. So outside of the diabetes health space, there was a, a number of uh, groups that were doing research in uh, endurance athletes. Mm -hmm. And so actually dating back to the 2012 Olympics, um, the women's velodrome cycling team, uh, they weren't doing very well, they were in all kinds of challenges. They used our product, none of them have diabetes, but they used our product to actually tailor their um, recovery regime. It wasn't about their glucose while competing, it was about their glucose during recovery. Uh, as their tissues uh, recovered. So uh, it was a really unique uh, use case that we hadn't thought of that uh, we found was uh, uh, powerful. Wow. And with, let me ask you, with ReSound, do, are, are people, um, are people that don't have any hearing problems using it to help enhance their hearing? Is, is there, is it like, how does that, is it, is it um, kind of hearing enhancement for just normal people? So if I get it and use it, can I have superpowers in hearing? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm normal hearing and I wear them every once in a while since I'm in product development, okay. but okay. not really. Okay. <laughs> is that on the horizon? Is that something that's going to come, come on the horizon? Are we looking at superpowers? Yeah, you know, I think for hearing and noise, certainly, mm -hmm. those are you know, things that could be done. Um, you know, we really focus on, on the hearing impaired person. Sure. Uh, you know, some of the things that you know, are really unique to them, now uh, we, we collaborated with Apple and made the first made, made for iPhone hearing mm -hmm. aid. And so everything from your iPhone streams now you know, wirelessly. We're even able to go through a small intermediary device and stream from Android today. So you can take a telephone call. Um, surprisingly, taking a telephone call is very difficult for many hearing impaired people, but if it's right there in their hearing aid, 
You know, we have a small microphone that I mentioned before in, in unique ways. I mean, you, you just take a husband and a wife, you know, in a car on a long road trip and they're elderly and, and you know, one of them's maybe wearing hearing aid. If the spouse can be wearing the mini mic, um, you're, you're just going to have a much better road trip. We, we've, we've had couples who say they never even talk when they're in the car because they know their, their spouse isn't going to hear them. You know, I have a friend who's hearing impaired, and if they ride in a car with uh, another couple, she'll actually put the microphone in the back window so she can hear them in the back because the hearing aids aren't very good at doing that. So there's, there's you know, a, a myriad of ways that you can use these small technologies to help you hear by placing them around. And I think, you know, we've been learning a lot of interesting things just based on the data we collect up in the cloud. Okay. So we, we implemented a, the health cloud back in the fall and just in terms of user patterns um, and the differences we see between intensive users and sort of occasional users just um, affecting things like sleep, affecting things like you know, their overall satisfaction. Yeah, so it's interesting. I, um, the more research that we did around breath analysis, uh, here's an interesting case study, um, it, which was really surprising to me when I really entered the space, is that um, even now they're running in the UK uh, essentially a, a canine dog uh, sniffing um, uh, trial, if you will, and the hit rate is 99.9% .9 accuracy in terms of lung cancer detection. So the inspiration, you know, obviously we're humans and we want to innovate, but if we could essentially create a 256 nanosensor, uh, essentially e-nose on a, a, just a single substrate, which is very feasible with where we are in, in terms of technology, um, imagine what that can do. So, so what's interesting is outside of alcohol, uh, we're, we're about to release a product if it's on time in Q4, but it's the first kind of world's mini GCMS, if you want to think of it that way, gas chromatography. But we can pick up five particular biomarkers now. Hydrogen to gut health, you biome. CO, which is lung health, pollution, um, even smoking sensation. Ethanol, of course, it's alcohol. Um, and we can filtrate down to acetone, which is a ketones, which relates to dietary weight loss. Um, and, and isoprene, which is cholesterol. So that's the beginning. And we're playing with electrochemical sensors. Uh, we're sensor agnostic, and we, start, we can expand upon that platform. But the bottom line is, if you talk about super sensing power, it's breathometer, it's the measure of breath. And so as Kleenex is to tissue, as Xerox is to printing, it's not a breathalyzer, it's breathometer in terms of what you can learn about the insights of your body just through a single breath test. And there's obviously, in terms of the one-to-one -one ratio, the headspace you know, in terms of blood, breath is the closest to that the actual bond or correlation right. factor. So imagine if you had a e nose, a super nose, and, and instantly know uh, essentially the insights, right, the, the, the kind of the metrics of your body. Um, I think that's what we're learning that in terms of the industry, that's what's de being demanded. It's can we deliver, and that's, if we do our jobs right, we will. I mean, what's, what's, what's striking with all the technologies is that um, they're so almost so easy to, to use, so easy to kind of you know, put on, wear, breathe into. They're actually making your life easier. Um, now, I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about your competitors, but what is, the, what is the landscape like for the different technologies that you're creating? Because I was reading about them and learning about them, and I know that there's some other companies that are looking at um, technologies that may be similar in some ways. But what, 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 is the, what does the landscape look like? Are there a lot of companies jumping in and trying to do, for example, uh, enhancements in, in hearing? I know there's a lot of um, TENS machines, for example, but they look very different. They look kind of a um, little bit weird sometimes. But what, 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 is it, what does the landscape look like for each of your companies? It's a jungle out there for us. I mean, just turn on late night TV and you'll see snake oil and machines and technology. Um, I mean, Really what, it, what ours gets back to is about personalization and automation and really simplifying the experience. So you know, we worked with IDEO on the design of the product, but you know, the first time you use it, basically the, the device is learning. Can, can, you, can you describe, describe the product? I don't think we saw a clear picture of it. I could model it. Yeah, let's, 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 <laughs> let's do that. <laughs> this is Quell. <laughs> See, we've got our own male model on the stage right now. So uh, it's worn on the leg. And, yeah, I wasn't planning on going into all the nuts and bolts, but it's worn on your leg because you have this dense cluster of sensory nerves. Just looks like an athletic like band. And it was designed to be inobtrusive and not stigmatize the person. Right. So just like you look like an athletic person. Uh, but we really designed it to be simple, simple, simple. So for example, it learns what dosage you need. So if you look at a traditional TANS, it has wires, it has cables, it has dials. And, you know, what dose do I need? You know, it's just like you go to a drugstore and you've got a rack full of drugs and you try to pick out what, what dosage. 
So we you know, have algorithms that actually will calculate what's the right dosage that you need. We then to completely automate the, um, the uh, delivery of care through something we call optotherapy, which is automatically adjusting the stimulation level to make sure we're at the optimal stimulation level. Finally, we've got power. I mean, we've got really, you know, so the latest generation lithium ion batteries, latest generation software to, to maximize power so you can use it. It's a chronic disease that needs to be treated chronically. So we had to design it so you could get several days worth of work between usage between um, charges. So, se so seven, it'll last several days. So if I, if I wore it, I, it would run for several days? Yeah, on average, we're finding people are getting three days of usage okay. out of it. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, I would say uh, it's a jungle in our mm -hmm. in ours as well. I mean, you really have um, you say the snake oil. I mean, you really have a lot of products masquerading as hearing aids that aren't hearing aids. What, um, what do you what, what do you mean by that? So, if people out there are seeing some of these other products, well, what, you see what? even the Bionic Ear from you know the Bionic Man who advertises it on TV. I mean, these are you know very cheap linear amplifiers. They're nothing like a modern. And when you say modern, linear amplifier. You mean uh, it gives the same amount of gain to the sound, no matter if it's a uh, real soft sound or a very loud sound. And what happens is they go into peak clipping and they distort and they sound terrible. And most of those kind of devices ended up years ago in the drawer and they'll end up in the drawer now. Um, you really need you know, high-end hearing amplification that has great sound quality in order to do well today. Um, in, the, in the space of high-end amplification, um, Resound is one of the only companies that doesn't have an intermediary device that actually has to receive the Bluetooth signal and then transform it to an inductive signal to bring it to the hearing aids. We actually have all our receivers, antennas, and everything in the hearing aids, so there's nothing stigmatizing around the neck that you have to wear. So right now we're in a great uh, space in this market. Sure, everybody's going to chase us. Thank you. Out. Thank you so much. Competition's good. Mm -hmm. uh, you Competition. know, diabetes, it's a terrible disease. And you do type 1 at the moment? We, pr primarily, our, our patients are mostly uh, people with type 1 who are managing insulin um, daily. Um, but we also are seeing the product uh, more utilization in intensive uh, type 2 management, mm -hmm. so people who are on insulin uh, for type 2. But uh, it, it's a tough disease. Um, it's, it's tough for everyone involved, the patients, the families, the doctors. Um, but one thing that the product, uh, why patients favor our product is uh, the connectivity we provide, mm -hmm. um, the performance, the accuracy. Uh, it, it's an extremely accurate product. So uh, as was mentioned earlier, garbage in, garbage out. If you don't have a really unique, powerful, accurate sensor, uh, you're not going to get the benefit uh, that we're all looking for. Great. Great. Thank you. Charles? Yeah, in terms of direct competition, um, it's, it's not as many. Um, right. Just right. because bottom line. Breath analysis says it technically existed since the 60s, but no one's really, uh, I would say, sought out to really uh, consumerize it um, and then just really kind of focus on the right technology and the right applications out of the gate. Everyone's right off the bat tried to focus on lung cancer, diabetes, holy grail, but you need a ton of uh, capital to deploy to even, you know, just scratch the surface. So uh, I think a lot of it's been strategic, tactical maneuvers on, on, on our part uh, to essentially grow the brand and grow the R&D and the technology stack. And having said that, the technology stack that we have, we're playing with fusion algorithms. I'm not the scientist, I'm not the doctor, but now we have a series of doctors and we have a series of phenomenal partnerships and now we have a chief medical officer. Um, so I think resourcing is, is really key, but all those in combined, I mean, we've basically acquired the top scientists from our competitors, so we've actually consolidated three of our competitors within a year and a half. And it wasn't through an acquisition, it was just hiring their CTOs and their medical officers. So having said that, it's the best way to do it. <laughs> it's like going in an outlet. Here we go. Um, but having said that, it's uh, slim, and I think it it's, uh, speaks to the fact that it's a very difficult market, but um, you know, there's not that reward without that significant amount of risk. So we hope we can make some, uh, some big breakthroughs in the next uh, year to two years. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy that we're in the market, and as you mentioned, competition is, is good. So. Wonderful. Well, on, on, on that note, we're going to have to end our super session. Thank you so much to all of you for all the amazing work that you're doing. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.